Here we have a graph of the function f of x equals x squared. We are going to use this graph to illustrate the idea of the slope of a curve at a point. We're going to get the slope of this curve at this particular point. Now that's defined to be the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point. So let's see the tangent to the curve at this point. Okay, a tangent in our case is a straight line that touches the curve at one point. Well, it, it touches the curve at just this one point, at least in the neighborhood or locality of this point. It may, of course, touch the curve at a second point somewhere else. Um, for this particular function, it just touches the curve at one point. Next, we are going to consider the slope of the tangent. Well, we saw in previous videos that if we get any two points on a straight line, we can get the slope of the line. Okay, so let's work with this point here, the point of contact of the tangent to the curve, and this point up here, which isn't shown, but what is shown is this right angle construction. And we saw in previous videos that um, with this right angle construction, we can get the slope of the line. So we can pick any two points. So we're using this point here and this point up here. We get the vertical distance between the two points. Uh, for this particular tangent, that distance is 2.19. That distance is sometimes called a rise. Uh, the horizontal distance between the two points is 1 in this case. As a matter of fact, we will make the horizontal distance between two points on the tangents equal to 1 in all cases. The slope is given by the rise divided by the run. Um, you see, if we divide 2.19 by 1, we just get 2.19. So if the run is equal to 1, then the slope is actually equal to the rise. Because if we divide any number by 1, we just get that number. The letter M, as we've seen before, is often used to denote the slope of a line. Okay, let's just move this point around. We can see that if we move this point up the curve, the slope of the curve, and hence the slope of the tangent to the curve at this point, increases. And if we move the point down the curve, the slope is decreasing. It'll actually decrease all the way to zero. Now, zero, zero is a point on the curve, and you can see that at that point, the tangent to the curve is a horizontal line, and the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Now let's move the point into the region where x is negative. Notice now that the slope of the tangent is negative. As before, we make the run equal to 1, plus 1. So we go out a distance of plus 1 here, horizontally from this point, And now you see that we have to go down to meet the tangent. So when we have to go down, the rise is negative. So we have to go down a distance of 3.64. Um, when the rise is negative, uh, the slope is negative. So the slope of the curve for uh, this part of the curve, where x is negative, is negative. Okay? And if we move this point up the curve, you can see that the slope of the curve, and hence the slope of the tangent to the curve at this point, is becoming more and more negative. Now we are going to see how we can calculate the slope of a tangent to this curve. We will consider this particular tangent, the tangent to the curve at the point 1, 1. Now obviously we don't have enough information from just one point on the tangent. We need two points on the tangent to get the slope of the tangent. Um, what we will actually do is consider the slope of a line passing through the point 1, 1 and a nearby point on the curve. So here is our nearby point. Okay, The line passing through these two points will be an approximation to the tangent. This line is called a secant. So um, the slope of the secant is an approximation to the slope of the tangent. And the closer we make this second point on the curve to the point 1, 1, the closer the slope of the secant will be to the slope of the tangent. Now, to get the slope of the secant, we know we have to draw in this triangular construction here. I am calling the horizontal distance between the two points little h. Now, later on, we will see a different notation for the distance between two points. Okay, in this case, the horizontal distance h is 0.38856. Uh, the vertical distance, or the rise, is 0.92809. And you can see also the coordinates of this second point to five decimal places. Now, the slope of the secant is the vertical distance between the two points, the rise, which in this case is 0.92809, divided by the horizontal distance between the two points, the run, 0.38856. 
and you can see that that's 2.38856. Now we can move this point down so that the secant is getting closer and closer to the tangent as you can see. Now the effects of moving this point down are the same as the effect of letting h go to zero. Let the horizontal distance between the points approach zero. So when that happens the slope of the secant will approach the slope of the tangent. Another way that we can say that is that uh, we can make the slope of the secant as close as we like to the slope of the tangent by making h sufficiently close to but not equal to zero. We cannot let h equal zero because then we will have division by zero and actually we will have zero on top as well. Okay, this triangle will disappear, the two points will coincide and the vertical and horizontal distances between the points will be zero each. We'll have zero divided by zero, which we saw in a previous video, is indeterminate. It can equal any value. So the idea is that as h approaches zero, but doesn't equal zero, the slope of the secant will approach the slope of the tangent. We could actually write what I said like this here. Limit as h approaches zero of the slope of the secant is the slope of the tangent. And this is the basic idea of um, how to get the slope of a curve at a point, also known as differentiation from first principles. So let's make h smaller and smaller. Let h approach zero. So now you can see h is 0 0.05, h is 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.01 and the slope of the secant now is very close to the slope of the tangent. As a matter of fact the slope of the secant appears to be ap approaching a value of 2. Let's see how to calculate the slope of the tangent exactly. Now we are going to consider the general case. So rather than the tangent to the curve at the point 1 comma 1, we will consider the tangent to the curve at a general point x. And uh, later on then we can let x equal 1 and solve the problem that we were looking at. As a matter of fact, we can let x equal anything we like. Okay, so a general point on our function has the form x comma f of x. In this case actually f of x is x squared. Now we are interested in a second point on the curve such that the horizontal distance between these two points is little h. Okay, so the x value of this point is x, well, um, we will let x equal 1 later on. What about the x value of this point here? Well, that's just x plus h, okay? And uh, then we need to get the value of the function at x plus h. Okay, that'll give us the height of this point above the x-axis. Okay, the y-value of this point is the value of the function at x plus h. So x plus h is roughly here on the x-axis. Now h doesn't actually have to be positive, but just to keep things simple we will assume that h is positive. Okay, what about the rise or the vertical distance between these two points? Well, we have to get the distance of this point to the x-axis, which is just the y value of it, f of x plus h, and subtract the distance of this point here to the x-axis, which is the y value of this point, which is f of x. So we take f of x plus h and subtract f of x. By the way, that should remind you of the formula for the slope of a line joining two points. If this point is called x1, y1, and this point up here is called x2, y2, then the slope of the secant would be y2 minus y1, which in this case is f of x plus h minus f of x, divided by x2 minus x1, which in this case would be x plus h minus x, which would just give us h in the denominator. So that's why this process is called differentiation. We're getting the difference of the y values of these two points, y2 minus y1, and then we're dividing by the difference between the x values, x2 minus x1. To get the slope of the tangent, we calculate this limit here. Uh, we take the limit as h approaches zero of the slope of the secant, and uh, we know what will happen, of course. The slope of the secant will approach the slope of the tangent. Okay, so um, 
Here's our statement for the limit as h tends towards zero of the slope of the secant. Now, here we have the notation for the slope of a tangent to a curve at a general point x. This can be read f prime of x. It's just the slope of this tangent here at a general point x. So basically we have to calculate this limit if we want to find the slope of a tangent to a curve at a general point x, this point here. So let's get f of x plus h for f of x equals x squared. Well, we just replace x with what's inside the brackets. That's x plus h. So we have to take x plus h and square it. OK, so that's how we get f of x plus h. You know, we could write the coordinates of this point as x plus h comma x plus h squared because the function here is x squared. And then we subtract f of x, which is x squared. And that gives us the rise, gives us this distance here, actually. OK, for this particular function, this point is coordinates x comma x squared. The distance from here to here is x plus h squared, and the distance from here to here is x squared. So we get the difference of those and then we divide by h. We expand out the brackets here, square the first term to get x squared, multiply the first term by the second and double to get 2xh, then square the second term. And uh, these x squared terms disappear. Now we divide each of these terms by h. 2xh divided by h is 2x, h squared divided by h is h. So for the function f of x equals x squared, the slope of the secant is 2x plus h. That is the secant that passes through the point, a general point with coordinates x comma x squared, and a nearby point, a horizontal distance of h away. Now, as we saw before, we can make the slope of the secant as close as we like to the slope of the tangent by making h sufficiently close to, but not equal to zero. Now, at the very end, basically we just let h equal zero, although, as I've said, h never actually reaches zero. But um, in the limit, as h approaches zero, 2x plus h, the slope of the secant, will approach 2x. So this thing here must be the slope of the tangent. And this is the slope of the tangent to any point x of the curve f of x equals x squared. So if we know what x is, we can calculate the slope of the tangent. So when x is 1, we saw that y is 1. And the slope of the tangent to f of x equals x squared at 1, 1 is got by multiplying 2 by the x value of the point. So we can see that the x value of the point is 1. So for this particular tangent, the slope is 2 multiplied by 1, which is 2. So, this here is called f prime of x. And uh, for the tangent at 1, 1, we worked out f prime of 1. That's 2. Now, you might be using an, an alternative notation for the derivative of a function. So, I want to go through this. And instead of h, the horizontal distance between the two points on the secant, we use delta x. We use the Greek letter delta. The vertical distance between the two points, the rise, is called delta y. So the slope of the secant is delta y over delta x. Now, um, the, the word delta should suggest the word difference, d for delta, d for difference. So here's our formula for the slope of a line that we I discussed earlier and that we saw in, in other videos. You know, what I said earlier is if you call this point x2, y2 and this point x1, y1, then the slope of the line, the slope of the secant is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. Now, if we take the limit as delta x tends towards zero of the slope of the secant, delta y over delta x, we get the slope of the tangent. So instead of calling it f prime of x, like we saw earlier, we could also call it dy dx. 
So for our particular example, we could have referred to x squared as f of x, or we could have said y equals x squared, you know. And the derivative of this function can be written dy dx, or it can be written f prime of x. And for this particular function, the derivative is 2x. That's the slope of the curve at any point x.